everyone. Thank you for joining me around the fireside tonight. My name is Joe, and I'm here to tell you a story. A story by one of the first members of the fireside community. The talented poet that brought us the War Years Pentalogy, Neil Willis. Now, with a story about the glory of nature and our connection with it, followed by a perspective on man's folly and faith, and the story of a young, special child. Proudly presenting Mother Tree and the Wood Kingdom. Please show him some support on Facebook at Neil Willis Poetry. As always, please don't forget to like, rate or follow Tales by the Fireside. Every interaction truly does mean the world to this channel. Now please, get comfortable, let go of the daylight and join me for our story. The Mother Tree by Neil Willis Piano Keys And as Piano Keys played through his mind, his depression stood aside, just for a moment. Calmness led him through autumn woods and places came back from his childhood, just for a moment. And Piano Keys played through his mind, all anxieties were pressed against the wall. Mind yoga took to the floor. Then the lights dimmed. Spotlight on one man curled in a ball, who thought that he was no one at all. He's in a woodland. Streaming tears down his cheeks blurred his view. Mind hell in the copse's glade. Then Frighten set in. From beauty of his surrounding world, into the dungeons of history he is hurled. He's past bedtime. Accumulation of thoughts built the brick wall. Head hell would never it climb. He's screaming from hurt. Remember close times and young as a child, from a fondness of love to hate he's riled. Seems like hours. The horrid thoughts circle the gerbil's wheel, nightmares that can never clear. He's running for life. Fevered thoughts cyclone, wind from hell. A moment sleep before the morning's bell. Piano keys that played through his mind. To hammered fists as thoughts still remind. Mother tree. In morning light he returned to the boys. And saw yesterday's man down in the dell. Great love and extraordinary desire was a failed mission, as his life was on fire. On orange leaves walked the sorrowful slow, looked to the sky through neighbour crowns. A sapling, he was beside his mother tree, with no words but love, she respected he. One step forward he hugged mother tree, Face sided with cheek pressed to the bark. He cried and cried, fell to kneel and hurt, blood grey skin and wiped tears through dirt. From a man of form to mind so wild, from an adult's head to eyes of a child, enactment fell to his begging knees, eyes of white seemed tortured to bleed. The whole of the woodland heard one man scream, a noise so sharp as it broke autumn dreams. Exasperation rebounded the trees from anger to whimpering lips of pleas. On force he had his head in her leaves, splayed fingers, tear wet foliage on floor, hand to hand grabbed fistfuls tight clenched, blood red eyes as life's heart was wrenched. Never had man such excruciating pain, the loss of his mind to compel him insane. Leaves under his side, curled into tight ball, from family man to the sapling did fall. Calm now, calm now, calm now. He came round from a sobbing wreck of a child, rose with grey cheeks stuck with fallen leaves. Dark lines under eyes as valleys could fall. Mother tree saw man, who was no one at all. 
and the whole woodland heard one man's scream that rode through the breeze to break the serene. Autumn leaves fell as to comfort his cries. Wood pigeons thrashed towards the sky. Roe deer bounded away from their clearing. Foxes stared, statues, to what they were hearing. Just in that moment. Mother tree too. His fingers touched spring leaves. Through light green she splayed her veins. In slow motion pulled away. Felt love that was unexplained. With curved hand felt her girth of trunk. Her outer husk told him all she was. Slowly lips kissed her bark. Much needed love was his cause. Holding a branch of his mother tree, he rose at four to greet the morn. Both listened to the bird choir, their beautiful moment ten past dawn. Then he walked away to the top of the dell. Right arm rose and spiral hand turned. In air he felt the shape of the tree, hesitated, clenched his fist, then pulled her love into he. Then kissed his close fist of love, pulled away from his lips to yearn, hesitated through open splay fingers. Such love to her he returned. And the foxes were still sleeping. The roe deer lied with eyes peeping. The curled rabbits nuzzled in burrows. To his lonely room, he'd see her tomorrow. Just in that moment. In his dreams, he saw forests of trees that saw mankind as minions of need, that thought Mother Earth as theirs, taught by preachers of gods in the air. Mother Tree 3 Good morning, Mother Tree, on such a nice day. He really did feel good as he walked down the dell. When he finally saw Mater, his mind darkened and light suddenly fell. The man raises fists with enragement, eyes screamed without thought, tears of pain. Childlike cried for Mother Tree, anxiety released to his mater again. He pummeled his Mother Tree fist by fist, shouted loud rage, both eyes bulging to scream, recited what was in his head, such venomous words to utter extreme, such acrimony to his mind deemed, much sacrifice to his health seemed. And the whole world heard one man bereave that rustled the leaves on the empathy trees. Calm now, calm now, calm now. He curled around the roots of mother tree, a fetal position, the comfort of child. One hand raised to touch her side. He cried and cried until all tears had dried. Mother Tree saw one poor man insane, allowed him to recompose again. A woodland breeze blew leaves as a sheet, for comfort as foxes lay at his feet. The song thrush cleared his throat to sing. Morning mass heard a single bell ring. A single bell ring. 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 The choir lead started to sing, just in that moment. In his mares he saw woodlands felled, that saw humans as wantons of greed. No thought to the landladers bare, capitalists that flaunted nature's fairs. Land raped to build concrete blocks, to show their ever-consuming powers, religious edifices as ivory towers. Ghastly gold doming over their prayers. Mother Tree 4 Year goes to year, as time had gone on, he visited Mother Tree at the boys. With the scent of bluebells in May, the cool shade when summer was hot, at the top of the dell looking down from earthen smell of autumn leaves to the silence of the December air. With snow laid, he stood in coat sleeves. Just for that moment, 
mother has not aged, together they grew. Upright she stood through the seasons, grey hairs, all that his decades show, are the grown scars that life had given. As the sun fluoresced through the leaves, the song of the speckled thrush loud, to recognise the times that they met, on her trunk, silken ribbon, he bowed. It's their little moment. As the sun red coloured the trees, the sapling child looked up to high, with one hand onto her mighty trunk, with love tears he kissed her goodbye. From Mater's comfort he would now be free, although he'd remain part of her family tree. The deer looked to him from fruit bramble, the foxes with white cravats wore red suits. From a single song thrush came a chorus, as though the woodland gave last salute, just in that moment. And piano keys played through his mind, as his depression was left aside. He walked away to bear new-grown fruit from a single tune. His mind concerto became absolute. In his eyes he saw the world actually breathed that came to know nature's resolute truth, where wind as clean air blew, knowledge spread through plagues of seeds. Every nation only took what was needed and gave back even more to nature's cause. A scene of pink blossoms, as though mankind made forever vows. Mother Tree 5 Good morning, Mother Tree, on such a nice day. He really did feel good as he walked down the dell. When he finally saw Mater, his mind enlightened, his whole heart to her spell. In the bright green of spring's leaves, where daffodils trumping glade light. He walked with his son to his hand, his young and heir to dwell. Years had passed since his kiss last. He stood to Mother Tree, his hand firm to her girth, and introduced his boy to his constant that still believed. As his lad's neck reached high, as his jaw dropped to wide, this son is Mother Tree. It is she that was here decades before we were made and will be here when we both to rest laid. For I cried and cried that she might die because of mankind. A disbelief to his young mind, a wonderment to his eyes. The man arced his arms around her mighty trunk, holding his son's hand to the other side. This is how we behold history. This is how we protect the future. And when I am long gone, you should stand to the wrongs. For in her lifetime, you are one of her million nuts, of one of her thousands of twigs, of one of many hundred branches that grows from one hearted trunk. In the whole of history, we are minions. History is not your textbook or Bible. They are humanity's tiny stories that try to prove our self-glories. Yet most show we played a bad part. And countries were still fighting. The holy caliphate with reprisals. Capitalists surfed the wave of money. They all expected a better tomorrow. As they walked away for another day, holding hands, the boy looked back. He saw a tree that was a giant to he, one with a character and a life. And though he didn't quite understand, he still wished her a fond goodbye. Her baby nut in a million. The Wood Kingdom The Birth In the dawn light of March, a feeble cry broke all peace. Bore of the loins, born for love. 
He greeted the sun through the canopied leaves. Born to the world, born to the equinox, he, the season's prince. His feeble cry hiccuped, bore in his father's upped hands, cradled in his fingers, lifted towards sky high. Born to glade of blossoming trees, a thank you to his mother earth, hear the air to be cry, hear the new air cry, scent of woodland green, where the silence lingers, no one would believe, over hedgerows, beyond forests of green, panning the fields, over the deserts, where sands lie swerved, and no life can yield. The coastline sea spanned across oceans, where the tales of whales navigate the fjords. Through bluest skies, wings of wide curves, great albatross fly. To steps of grass, winds blow across vast, no trees to cut one sight. Each person should know why the air prince of the March spring cries. And so he shall be called Equinox, the day of birth, his character, for equal day to night, equal dark to light, the perfect balance, the child of pure mind, his family, society bereaved. They live to woodland, kingdom of leaves, to greener fields. Beyond villages, past all the towns, bells of cities. Beyond peoples, beyond families, through communities. Considered thoughts, protests of others, from peacetime quiet, the years of great wars. Anarchy of sides, to blank others' views, where walls divide. Battles of death, where nobody can win, yet heroes of both reside. Each human should know, whether black or white, religious or non, why the air prince of the equinox cries. He born not just to a world of hiccups, where imams, where priests, where leaders focus the minds. He born to a world of constant detest, where most forsake their real freedoms, their freedoms from ties, freedoms so they can personally decide. For his home is the woodland of kings, where crowns minaret the new prince of spring. The legend roots to hundreds of years, the founding of life side the hundred of mirrors. Faith stands in hard wood of pillars, a grand temple of love that nature brings. Young saplings as candles to the altar, the berries as food of life. To its peers. The ancient woodland of the north stood to witness the wasteland south. Field long, just two acres wide, minarets and domes west, towers and tall spires east. Yet the land was no man's divide. In the shade to clouds of gloom, Lands that stood furrowed brow, yet the sun shone to either side, above each religion sky of blue. The sound of true peace. The wood family washed from the mighty hill stream.
that passed through forest ancient, the same praised by the Islamics as being the most holiest tide. At the river's delta, due south, Christians fish the reef. Islam, their nets released. Alongside, they were promised to cease. The river of life met the sea's mouth. His altar is below the branch arches to sing thanks for each equinox to pass. The autumn fruits are his larder's forage, abundance for long cold winter's storage. He stood on the edge of his wooded home to stand higher upon the knowledge tome, to view across barren land that had been raped, toward the people's cities of religions that pray for peace of the million minions, the spires, the towers, minarets and domes, yet they look at each other with such detest, to look upward that their god be the best. There are fractures in great Jerusalem's walls, common foundations over religion sprawl, the same blocks that ascribe to one and all, then rewritten for each reverend leader to call. Can the spires, towers and synagogue halls hold hands together to show love for all? Can gold minarets, step temples and domes kneel the same pile and respect each one's thrones? For there are fractures in Jerusalem's walls. The Podium of Life the king of his own wood kingdom nurtured the equinox sun. The prince to have a life of balance, a boy to man, must grow to stand. To the woodland floor lay a felled tree, a straight beech one hundred feet long. To one end its roots, still to the earth, now stands as a podium log. This, my son, is our altar of calm the stage of two hundred years. With more knowledge than you'll know, each ring holds teachings sown. Upon its heart, feelings will grow. About us, son, our temple of light, a glade to the great tree felled. With midday sun coming due south, there's karma to the woodland's mouth. And young saplings as a parade of candles, a fire stood, centred point, as a teepee. To the north of the glade stood straight the elder. She, the highest, was the great mother tree. Equinox stood barefoot to the altar, two feet higher, a prouder being. Mother tree, she stood silently behind, his shadow cast to her large-rooted ground. So, my son, here you will balance your own mind, your own heart. The prince stood straight, with arms wide as though a cross. But this was no religious symbol or punishment for doing wrong. So, my son, turn your palms up, hands cupped. The prince did so. Close your eyes, the view of the dark. You are now the scales of character. In your left cup are sadness, anger, and every bad thing you now have. In your right palm is gladness, wellness, with all the good your life does bring. When you have more bad things to the left, your mind must put equal happiness right. And when you have equal good to the bad hand, it will be easier to stand, arms wide. If you have more sadness and badness held, your arms will drop with the heavy hurt mind. Now, son, touch all fingers above head. Allow your elbows each side as bent. 
five fingers to the five others bend should have whitened tips that press to flat. Push them, eyes closed, slowly upwards, so flat palms meet, then splay fingers. Your hands will slowly part at angles, the gap between widening as they grow. You have made the symbol of the tulip, its spring bulb closed, opens to warmth. Your hands will be rolling to your wrists. You represent springtime's sign. So son, sit to the podium, your two closed feet also to your seat. Both your knees tight to your chest, embrace your arms around your legs. On your knees, rest your forehead. Close your eyes. You are an acorn so small, a nut that is not yet born. Slow to your feet rise, to stand to your podium high. Your hands also rise slow above your head, display wide, dangling to each side. And with your eyes still closed, you now represent the mighty oak. The father laid a plank to the tree felled, two meters wide, one forward, one to the back. The prince sat one end, his father the other, a pivot, the blank to tree's bark. This, my son, is the seesaw of respect. Whatever you do, I do the opposite. When you are low down, I am higher up. When you are up, I am to my toes. And when you smile and laugh, when you are high to the sky, and have a saddened face when left to ground. Every move you make, sudden and fast, affects my position as complete contrast. This, my son, is the same in your life. Never be quick in responding to leave the others despondent. The father then changed the length of the plank, now four metres wide, two fore, two aft. They balanced the seesaw longer by length, high to low, to the middle, then back so. As the prince pushed his feet to the ground, his father glided from higher to lower. So much gentler than the prince would expect, less weight moved his father, though shorter legs. So, my son, use the wider plank in your mind when you consider others in your eyes. Wider means slower action, time to reflect, a better balance of heart, of mind, of soul. This, my son, is one balance of life. If you do feel higher than the others, never laugh, they might be suffering. Balance the seesaw as respect, so you both sit to the middle, then neither is the higher, so neither is the lower, and each of you have the same view. The Balance Tree The equinox air played to the trees, his homeland was the edge boundary. Sprawled with defence bramble, to under light grew the weeds. Never to go to the wasteland running between, domes to the west, spires to the east, from ancient woodlands to north, the air found intrigue as fatal greed. For he prayed on the wind-felled beaches, as though a tightrope stood one leg straight, one leg balanced out to the side, his hands cupped, high as they reach. This, his karma to balance his mind to free, his body a self-temple to the sky. To keep outside the world wronged, karma beyond the religious preach. Just after the morning's rising sun, the religious war again begun. He heard imams call to prayer as though a voice in pain, not understanding what they said. But as each preached to reach from the east came Christian bells, both heard across no man's 
as though a strength of contempt. As the sun of low rose, the spires pointed shadows as detest over no man's breadth. As the sun set low west, minarets and domes shadowed homes, casting no man's as theirs. In between guns from either side, shot across divide, band to highest sun. But even though the brightest noon, the land held a cloud of gloom. Each day, each week, each month, each year, daily the holy fighting resumed. But as he balanced to his tree, he heard nothing, thought nothing, saw nothing. His whole soul is free. From a nurtured acorn, he, the mighty oak, could just be. Equinox, the self-church, had created his own mind temple. Just in that moment, there was no world beyond he. Each day, each week, each month, each year, religion's solid foundation stones were vulnerable prone. As though an earthquake shook the earth's ground, there were fractures in religion's town. The Lessons Lesson 1 You should live your life as though a spring meadow of flowers Thrive in blossoms the proud stems hold Scythe the long grasses in heat of summer Listen to the skylark's happy song Gather from hedgerows autumn fruits A winter woodland buried nuts to roots Lesson 2 You should play your life as though standing on a pavilion. Your characters are one playing team. See them all as your own mind's home pitch. Four or six shouldn't always be goal. But one to throw ball, one for the batting, one to take defence, one for the catching. Your own conscience should be the umpire. A home win should not always be prized. Lesson three. You should feed your life in small portions, a little at a time, for greed is never a need or wanting. Life's best are fruits hanging to trees, afternoons for nettle tea and rest. Enjoy sweet finger from the tree that hums, never gather the circle when fungi comes. Eat moderate, allow nature to thrive, cut all the branches, your food tree will die. Lesson 4. You should feel all love as a bird sings to the blossom tree. Collect as a bee to the nectar flower. Make honey so you have more to give back. Hold all love in your mind's straw basket. Scatter it as seeds to your life sown. Water with compliments and watch it grow. Your own beating heart will then rightly know don't always catch, as it's better to throw. Lesson 5. You should think through life. That a word or a gesture to others can be a page of the thesaurus. There are so many ways to convey. Never shout at or threaten another. Talk as though you would want them to receive. Defence is not a good way to believe. Your own tongue will learn to what you achieve. Their own eyes should like what they do see. Lesson 6. You should wear through life. No fixed hat, trouser, other dress. To offend one of religious order. Or mimic their everyday beliefs. Is considered wood kingdom offence. Allow them prayer, their choirs, their spires. Allow them domes, minarets higher. Religion makes its own enemy. Let us not be the one under their fire. My son, our load will not have the perfect road, but there are great flints along our path. But it is the only way that we will know. My air, 
there are cracks through which you can fall. But there are large cracks in society's halls and greater cracks in Jerusalem's walls. Jerusalem's walls. The minarets were shadows to the morning sun, a glint of gold as the rising shone, a glint of hope for the new day dawning. Yet the imam's call to prayer sounded as a voice in pain, a call heard over no man's over the Christian East. Each mosque their own loud hailing, each with individual wailing. The dome's dark fast curves as the prized light begun. The image silhouetted sky, a shadow to peoples as an awning. The holy river still flowing, changed to red in sun's taint. The callings hailed the pain. Prayer mats lay to the east, looking to the towers of priests, whose churches looked away as their own congregation prayed. The bells as an ornate calling. Then the silence. Any person could stand in no man's and dance the furrowed lines to chants to the southern side. Each religion at peace, a few moments where the fighting ceased. They were all doing the same. Dance, to the sound of peace. There are great cracks in Jerusalem's walls, where the foundation stones are the knowledge for all, where spires meet the minarets and domes, yet each church is on its constant own. Each is a threat to one another. Share your incense and hand others your beads. Let them feel worries of your loop seeds. Only then will each religion so understand, each high fortress no longer be manned, each human to become a brother. Share your ever-blue skies of never-ending peace, where every head bows to a common priest, every footstep to follow each in the sand, the fisher nets across fanned, to water thrown for one another. No man's is every man's need, where golden wheat is the common feed, each to eat the harvested bread, each to share fish from blue seas. Pray under the gloried dome, read from each leathern tome. There are great cracks in Jerusalem's walls, where there is room along the westerns tall. Ask why the Jewish men, Torah to their hands, cry as from their holy place banned. Now for centuries they have suffered. Give to them your worry beads, one and all to touch their wall. How does it feel? Does the empathy flow in the morning sun's glow? Arms to each man's shoulders, together smile, dance and chant. But you can't. As dew laid to the leaves, a promise could be a relief. But each leader, each teacher, each church's lead preacher proclaim their disciples' thoughts, each with its own slant. There are cracks, fractures that break the mould. Damnations, history facts to be told. There are great cracks in Jerusalem's walls from the apostles of the Dead Sea Scrolls, translations to suit each and one's own. Each church to have its finite brand. One whisper begins another. Starts a rumour towards trouble. Swinging is the boat of incense. Is it there to cover the stench? You may as well break your beads. Your worries are beyond their need. Peace may always be the prayer. But the context hides an underlayer. Launch your ever caliphate. As martyrdom becomes your fate. Then count your troops who died in your holy war, your congregation less than before. The imam's voice sounds of pain and will do each sunrising day. You will pray towards the east, 
Yet when the sun sets to west, then a thought. Have you done your best? Let the walls of Jerusalem fall to a level playing field for all. The imam's voice hails the pain, yet the land of each religion is still slain. In the quietness of morning prayer, equinox fell to their lair, for he runs south through no man's. With the need to want to think higher, he ran with toy plane in his hand, arm up high, propeller driven by rubber band. With engine noise through his mouth, over band land launched to the air. He thought, during prayer, neither side cared. As the chalice was passed, as prayers were said upon mats, as holy incense was waved, the giving of ceremony bread. In the want for peace, one landmine was released. The furrows in their lines became a crater grave for Equinox's life. The Torah became torrid for something so horrid. The Bible slammed as libel, and the Quran's eye for an eye saw religion's ugliest smile. The king of Kingdom Wood put a cross by no man's plain where his son and heir was slain. The cross was not a religious belief but the scales of character that naturally lent far left as it held more badder than bad. To his knees his father wept, looked to the skies the minarets and spires, to know, just like his family before, he there bereft because of the holy war. The Sloughed Cross To no man stood commemoration, handmade from beech, almost as defiance as there was all bad to none of good, lurched to left were the character arms. The Aquarius rain blew through the trees, Taurus clouds charged through the fields, bulls head down thundered the earth, pitted my hooves as forward they barged. The wooden cross stood as defiant tree, arms outward to lightning cross shaft to contact the lords of the season's mirth, to pray to furrows was lottery's chance. The rains speared an angle torrid. The hungered acres now a flooded slough, from yester's sods to a famine found. So little would ne'er feed diets of sparrows, layeth darth, loss to agrarian gods. The mud, an invite for a wallowing sow, on brighter day, she would be so proud slumber. Now, pelted by vengeance of storm arrows, the hell of weather, to pink-fleshed prod. As though the ground slain and then left to bleed, the blood flowed as a sacrificial sea. A vow of war from Mars to never cease, utter umbrage as the devil laughed. Through detest storms, one felt the pain. Pointed minarets to the west glowed. The spires as high flashed in the east. The arches of gold, a smirking gloat. Yet, through the hours of the rain horrid, one witnessed no tolerance to cease. So, no man's population increased. Shame, he's there as war deceased.